Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm Larry Wydell, and before we get started, if you want to know exactly how to win again and again, go to wydellonwinning.com forward slash webinar now to watch something I've put together for you. Now let's get going into this episode of Million Dollar Mastermind. I am here with my good friend, probably my best friend in Verona, Italy, <laughs> Matteo Perrin. Hello, Matteo. Hello, Larry. Glad to talk to you here as we wrap up the year. How's, uh, how's things in Verona? Um, things in Verona are, uh, are nice right now. It's quite cold. <laughs> you know? And uh, so, of course, it's one of my favorite times of the year. So you can layer up uh, with some good clothing. Yes. Now, here's the deal, folks. Matteo is an amazing uh, young man. Uh, he started in Verona. Uh, and I'll let you tell him tell you the story. But he's developed his own brand in the luxury lifestyle uh, arena because of the contacts he has, because of where he was, because he wanted to do what he wanted to do. But Matteo can, I'll let him describe it. When he's, when he's a, uh, talks about luxury lifestyle, he knows how to create whatever it is you want for yourself. If it's shoes, clothes, you know, male, female shoes, clothing, accessories, uh, all the way to the bags, which is, you know, a very complex type thing. But the, and people who, the reason people work with uh, Mateo is we agree, we, we pretty much universally have the opinion it's his, the quality of his uh, products are better than you would get at Louis Vuitton, Hermes, or at least equal to Hermes and uh, places like that. And so he is like the best of the best with the uh, cloth and everything. And so uh, he's developed a niche for people who just like things their own way and they want to be different and they like special stuff and they worked hard enough in life to be able to afford special stuff. And if you are like that, you'll probably get to know Mateo somewhere along the way. And he's uniquely positioned at the place in the world that has access to these finest uh, uh, craftsmen that uh, can make this stuff. So anyway, Mateo, welcome and uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Where are you now? Uh, wh what do you actually do now? And then we'll go back out where you were when you started. Okay. Well, thank you, Larry. So, yeah, my name is Matteo. I'm from Verona in Italy. Uh, we're, you know, one hour inland from Milano, right between Milano and Venice, below the Alps. Um, I grew up here in a very, very small town. And uh, basically what I do is I'm a lifestyle designer. And uh, when I say lifestyle, it's not because... Uh, I, you know, I design your lifestyle, but I actually design things to go with your lifestyle. You know, sometimes in, in the process of doing that, we do create a better lifestyle for the person because they realize, you know, things that they wanted to do or how they wanted to do it and how they wanted to enjoy life. But, uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to be able to design, you know, e express my point of view in design, you know, with the mind of the customer. And you do, uh, you do have a website, you do uh, trunk shows around the world. And if people wanted to come and see, uh, they could contact you through that website, or they could go to one of your trunk shows. You had a trunk show out at my gallery in Aspen this summer. We're talking about doing that again this coming summer. And uh, we've talked about possibly a trunk show here this winter in uh, Palm Beach, where I'm going to have uh, uh, January and March have, uh, uh, I guess, basically a pop up. Uh, and so uh, if people want to come see your stuff, they can, that's how they can kind of connect with you or just send you an email to kind of see yeah. what. What, what is the level of quality and what are the kind of things? And uh, a lot of times it's somebody in your life you want uh, 
things for. But when you started this, but let people know the kind of uh, example of the kinds of things you've done uh, for people. We, we won't, he, of course, you know, confidentiality, he's not going to give you the names of his clients and all, but the kinds of things and the kind of fun you've had and the, some of the friends that you made, then we could go where you started. But I mean, Mateo is on, uh, Mateo is well known folks. And uh, in with people who can afford these things. So uh, that's why I really wanted to get him on here so you could m meet him and hear some of the things that went on in his mind that allow him to start from nothing. Uh, you know, he was in the right place. He had the right family, but you know, that doesn't mean he had a business, you know, and so he's made his mark because of the work he's done and the kind of way he's looked at things. But the, some of the top in experiences you've had in your, your life that ha you've been able to do that, that really were thrilling for you. What would you say are some high points for you? Um, well, you know, um, when people say lifestyle, like some of the things sometimes, I remember the first time I had a, a person ask me, you know, they wanted to create a better experience for their family for traveling. And uh, again, coming from a small town in Italy, I, I didn't, I, I, I never had a luxury to go on one of those private jets. And this person had a couple. And uh, so they basically asked me to go in, check their planes, measure, you know, their, their spaces and create uh, items for each person that normally would travel, you know, so blankets, pillows, pajamas, you know, things that match the plane interior, but also match the personality of, of who is in it. And on top of it, you know, do uh, like have all the items that people would bring on the plane kind of match. So there, let's, let's say this, so when they got off of plane in Paris or London or Moscow or Singapore, they wouldn't look sloppy. You know, they all yeah. kind of, you know, all the bags had a, you know, certain feel. And uh, so that, I mean, honestly, that was one of my first big projects that I was, you know, very, very excited about because it was very new and had to deal with different personalities and different people. Yeah. And the thing is the whole idea of this may, I'm sure it's a new thought for a lot of people, but I, the idea of having your own designer, you know, people have their own cooks at their house, you know, they have their, their own uh, people who do special things for them. And so this is just uh, in that, you know, interior designer, if you have a house, things like that, landscape architect for your yard, if you're doing a big thing, uh, uh, architect to design your new house. But this is like for your lifestyle, the clothes you wear, the, you know, shoes, the, you know, the appearance, the colors, the, you know, it's, and if you're out there and you've been like me, where you've been looked all over, like where you you earn the right to be able to get something nice and you want something nice, but then you waste a lot of money buying stuff. That's not that nice. That's where a guy like Mateo comes in. And so how did you start? Let's get into the journeys. That gives a picture of where, where you are. And we have it, you know, just taking a few minutes to get that on the table. But uh, sure. so if you're a, you're a top level actor, musician, uh, uh, whatever, uh, business CEO, uh, those are the kind of, uh, you know, those are the worlds where uh, Mateo is comfortable in operating. People that have their own business, been successful, you know, and what we're doing is when you want to go, I think, uh, and this is part of your story, Mateo, is your business is all about helping people who want to go beyond the basics, you know, yes. just get by. I mean, you can go to Walmart, you can go to the cheapest store and get tennis shoes and clothes and pajamas and blankets and this, that, and the other, if that's all you want. But people who get their own business, I mean, they can get a job somewhere, but they want a special job. They want to own it. They want to be able to make the decisions. They want control of their life. They want the extras. They want more. They want to make uh, a statement 
with their life and a business side. And so, you know, this is a matter of just translating another step of making a statement in life and enjoying things. This is not about need. This is about, and this podcast is how uh, the thinking uh, that's beyond just, you know, just survive, you know, just eat, uh, you know, beans and crackers and wear clothes from the uh, Goodwill and that's all you need. But that's not, that's existing. That's not living, you know, that's not flourishing. And so uh, the idea behind this thing is for people who want the, and have earned the right to be able to do those kind of things, not just for themselves, but for family and friends and, and, and all. I mean, this is, you know, that, that's the world that Mateo operates in. But how did you get into that world? Where, where did you start? When, when in your life did that idea of doing something like this occur to you? Well, I would say it started when I was young. And, you know, I know a lot of people say this, oh, I started when I was a little kid, but it actually, my grandmother had a a very close friend of hers in Rome, and she had a very small uh, apartment in Rome that he, Angelo, her friend, helped her, you know, buy. And Angelo happened to be a master tailor. And when I was young, he was in his early 80s, and he was still making clothes. And I remember, you know spending a lot of time at his apartment because it was bigger than my grandmother's and uh you know i would see pictures of people i didn't know then because i was young but you know Humphrey bogart cary grant and some of the you know italian politicians or famous people but he was basically had made a lot of suits for a lot of these famous people back in you know the dolce vita era of italy and um, he was actually one that helped me point me and my uh, future to where it is now, because uh, I used to wish I would uh, I would become like him, like a tailor, someone that could actually make it, you know, with your own hand. And I remember when I was 12, he said to me, you know, after he asked me what I wanted to do, and I told him, I said, Angela, I want to be like you. And he told me, no, don't do that. I was very upset, but after a few minutes, he explained, he said, listen, since you're six, you hang out with me and my, you know, tailoring shop and all you do is draw. So why the, you know, why the hell do you want to make stuff? And I said, well, because it's beautiful. And he said, listen, you can always find people like me, but finding people like you who have ideas and who can draw from scratch from nothing. That is harder. So it actually opened my mind more. And, uh, you know, that was one of the things that got me started and realized that I can actually create something just from an idea and then finding someone who could do it. And, uh, you know, so my first things when I was young, uh, I was 14. I had finished school here in Italy and I decided I wanted to experience something different i felt italy at that time was not going to give me what i needed and wanted so because of a family friend who lived in los angeles i was able to go and stay with her for a little while and i started painting blue jeans you know on hollywood boulevard so that was uh something that probably couldn't happen now but back then it was it was quite fun and for a 14 year old from italy from a small village it was when I say small village, it's really small, 7,000 people. You know, is, that how, so. is, that, is that how big Verona is? No, no. I mean, I live outside, outside Verona. Outside of Verona. Okay. All right. But it's about 15 minutes drive, but it's still, it's very small, you know, little wow. town. Mm-hmm. And so what was, so that was a couple of years after, I, your head obviously started spinning once right. your friend, the master tailor in Rome, put that in your head and I guess you were starting to work on options of how you could make that happen uh, yeah. fast, right? Yeah. I mean, as part of it, you know, as a, as a young kid, I like to draw, I like to paint. So it was kind of fun for me to paint on clothes because it was something that I would wear. And, uh, you know, I realized 
especially in Los Angeles, it was very interesting because that's one thing that I love about the Americans, the culture, is people ask. They see something they like. They just ask. They don't, like, go on. Like, Italians would probably go look at you and think, wow, that's so cool, but never ask. They'll just go on and, you know. Instead, Americans will just ask, like, wow, where did you get your jeans? Where's your jean jacket from? Where's your shirt? And so I would say, oh, I painted it. And that's how people, that's how I actually was able to start. Hey, listen, there's a lot of information online, but there aren't a lot of people who have actually done something. In my case, I've actually built a successful business that's accrued over $5 billion in assets under management and has done well even during trying times. Now, if you want to know exactly how I've done this, go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now. I've compressed a decade of learning into five short weeks just for those of you who want to give yourself an incredible advantage and are tired of waiting and watching others move up. What kind of plans did you make as a kid to make this launch? You know, how long did you plan to do it? Was it an impulse thing? It was, uh, I'd say it was quite impulsive because I started going to a school here in Italy that I didn't like. You know, my parents liked because they wanted me to be an accountant, have a good job, stable, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. So I I went there for one and a half week and then I I just (laughs) left. (laughs) (laughs) So you you completed the basic requirements for like a high school diploma. Now it was like going on, get your advanced training. They had you all set up to be an accountant. And yes. (laughs) Well, you did, you, you did good to last that long. Uh, (laughs) And so uh, anyway, the, you hit the ground in LA. Did you have a plan for the G, you know, painting jeans on the sidewalk when you got there? Did you just say, I'm going to get there and figure it out? Because 14, 14 14 is not even an age that you can get a job. You know, I I think you have to be 16 to go to work in a lot of most places that, you know, with big companies. Yeah, I mean, I basically did not have a plan. I liked basketball, so I figured I would just come there, go play basketball, maybe become a big star. (laughs) Then after the first week, uh, I went to a playground, and um, this kid that was even smaller than me basically dunked on my head. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, and I realized that was it. I was like, yeah. okay, that's you know, I'm not growing any much probably. Yeah. And uh, on the plan, yeah, yeah in Italy maybe eight. I was worth it, but in uh, you know, in Los Angeles it was a not- different game. <laughs> 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 so I still you know enjoy to play as a how do you say as a hobby or you know sport right. uh, love, but um, you know, so I just. Uh, I just started like wandering around and just enjoying the city. And after a week, people just started asking me like, where did I get my jeans and things like that. And when I would say I made them, I mean, I wouldn't say I made them. I, I had a piece of paper because I didn't speak English. I, I could read English pretty good and write okay. And I could, I would definitely could not understand the Los Angeles, uh, you know, accent. Yeah. In Italy, we learn British English. Oh, British English. So, So it it was very, very tough for me at the beginning. For three months, I basically would go around with uh, written things in a little book. So if people asked, I would just open a book and show them like. And so so eventually uh, this turned into a business for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I realized uh, when, when the first people asked me if I could paint something, I, I asked for $5 because, you know, at least I, I know I could go and get some McDonald's and yeah. maybe get a, get a bus ticket back to the house. And then, you know, people started, you know, asking me to do a few more and this, and then I guess people appreciate it and, you know, start giving me $10 and say, Oh, keep the chains. And, and so, yeah. So how long were, were you doing that? I did that. Uh, bum, 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 bum. I did that for about a year. You know, I started, I, I, I used to just lay down on the, on the floor 
And then I started doing maybe a little bit more from home because if they were more complicated, then, you know, also the, the boulevard was not so pretty uh, every day. Yeah. Then. Oh, you ought to see it now. But yeah. uh, <laughs> Sunset, right? Uh, yeah, Sunset or Hollywood Boulevard, either uh, one. I would either go. one, yeah. Uh, so at some point, what was going on in your mind from that? What do you, what would you say you learned from that? What can you, what would you say you learned that you would want to tell your children or people who are coming up that caused you to move forward and make, cause that's a bold move. It's one thing to have a thought. It's another thing to act on it. And, right. uh, it's another thing then to learn, you know, you go out there, you, uh, you can't speak the language. Uh, you, you know, you, all you have is uh, your clothes that you had drawn on and people would ask you about that. And so that turned into something. But when did you get the idea, I can go back to Italy and do this on a bigger scale, especially, especially you're still a young teenager. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the idea of going back to Italy took a lot longer, you know, it, uh, you know, for a long time, I just uh, was just enjoying, you know, I was a kid, I was 14, I was 15, 16, I just enjoyed uh, painting. And you know, I realized I could make some money doing it. And, uh, you know, and then I would also, at times, I, I moved around the US a little, a little bit, you know, different states, different cities. I, I kind of was, I was, was a, on a very explorer kind of, uh, you know, a very adventure mind. And, uh, and I love painting, so I kind of did both. I wanted to go see Portland. I would go there and I would paint some stuff there and then move. And, and you're picking up the language as you went, right? Yes, yeah. After that, three months, I was able to answer people when they asked me a question. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's got to be... Uh, a big help. Now, the thing is, you moved around. Now you're moving around. Uh, you're getting away from your comfort zone of having a friend's house. Right. So you must have made some pretty decent money, had some pretty good confidence about expansion. You know, entrepreneurs uh, have that adventuresome spirit. And mm -hmm. what did you say to yourself? Uh, were you getting, were things going bad in LA? Uh, or what, what was the lure of a, another town? A lot of times entrepreneurs cannot explain why they do what they do, but the, the more, usually there's a reason. And the right. better you get at recognizing the things that you did, uh, you know, the reason behind it, uh, the better. And so you had this adventure, but when you, you must have had the idea when you moved to the U.S. that, uh, uh, of exploring and doing other things. You probably didn't move to LA with the idea of this is where I'm going to stay. Uh, um, I mean, honestly, I kind of thought LA would be my thing because, you know, Lakers and, you know, basketball and right. movies, all that stuff when you come from Italy. But honestly, uh, at, at the beginning, a lot of my moving was, uh, uh, let's say, was due to girls. You know, I would meet a girl, she was from another city, and then I would go home. Maybe I should go check out Chicago. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> so Maybe. All, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's honestly a lot of the time, the moving. But I, I've always been a very outdoorsy guy. And even in Italy, you know, with my parents, we would, you know, travel and see the country. So I like the idea for inspiration to go see different places because... I remember like a time, you know, I had to go to Montana and then I, I remember just sitting there looking at all this field with, uh, with cows and different colors and stuff. And then I, I made a pair of leather paints that were, you know, in different color leather. So it was kind of reminding me by the cows. It, it, it's silly, I guess, but that's just what, what designing is. Yeah. I mean, it always seems stupid until you pull it off and then everybody loves it, you know? Right. But, uh, you know, like every great idea is dumb in the beginning, you know, to somebody anyway, right. and then and, and can't be done until you do it. But now, so that's another key. Your parents gave you uh, lots of exposures 
to different things growing up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what would you say? Uh, so what I'm picking up was that you picked up the atmosphere, the, the inspiration. You got inspired at an early age by mm -hmm. art, uh, people creating things. You're always drawing. So you found something that fit in with what you, uh, you had a natural talent and you did it all the time. People like wonder, what should I do in my life? It's like, well, what do you wake up in the morning and think about? You know, what right. do you find yourself doing? If there's a magazine rack of all kinds of different magazines, which magazines do you go and look at? Now, I'm not just talking about recreation like basketball, but you know, you look at basketball, check it out. You know, if you like basketball, sports, fishing, this, that, go see if you can be great at it. But right. you're gonna, usually you're going to find, no, it's got to be something more substantial. But you got to sort through these things of things that interest you. And yeah. that's one of the greatest gifts you can give for kids is exposures to a lot of different things and, yeah. uh, and support them when they're, when they're ready to go. The thing is like when they're ready to go take a, a big step, you know, the parent can either be a problem to hold them back, but when possible, go ahead and encourage them. You know, that, like you said today, today would not be a good time to send a 14 year old to LA with, uh, no, I mean, honestly, I was I was lucky enough that my parents understood me as a person, right? Because um, you know, like I felt like I was ready, and uh, if they had probably stopped me, I would have probably run away and done it anyway. Yeah. So knowing the fact, you know, it took him a few months because I started in um, September '97 when I wanted to leave. And I really left on January 3rd, 98, you know, so it took my parents a little while and they wanted to figure out where I could stay and with who, and you know, that way they, they felt they had some control. I wasn't just going to live right. on the street. Yeah. And the idea of there is at some point you've got to launch, you got to go, you got to find out for yourself. You got to see with your own eyes, you've got yeah. to, come to your, your own conclusions. Like your, your parents could have said, Mateo, get serious. You'll never be a mm -hmm. basketball player for the Lakers. Get right. serious. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to be the second coming of Magic Johnson. You know, right. the thing is, but uh, you would have never believed it. You know, real, here's the thing. Reality is the greatest teacher. And you can't really talk people into things, but you can get them in a situation where they can try their stuff and then let reality send them a lesson whether or not it's possible or not possible, you know? Right. Yeah. And uh, if it's totally not possible, if the person has a brain, they're going to recognize it. If they don't have a brain, there's no, you, no reaching them anyway. But yeah. uh, people with intelligence are going to run into a brick wall and say, okay, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to go over here. But the idea is be heading somewhere that appeals to you. So yeah. anyway, I've got some ideas of things I want to talk about next time Mateo but thank you uh thank you for sharing and and showing us behind the scenes of uh what it's like to launch a you know you did something absolutely unique but when you have you build something absolutely unique like you're doing uh it's got to come from a unique place it's got to come from a unique motivation where you do things and then it takes shape over time and so i want to get into i understand your thinking i understand some of the ingredients that went into that but i want to see now how that evolved you know the the thing is to have an idea have experiences but do they evolve do you improve do you fix things and get it where, you know, you, you're making a little money. Are you going to stop there or, or are you going to now leverage that information into something that could be more productive and, and pay off bigger for you? So thanks so much, Mateo, and uh, look forward to next time. All right. Thank you, Larry. Ciao. If you enjoyed what you've heard and are dead serious about finding out for yourself exactly how this works in the real world, I've taken the most valuable business lessons I've learned over 40 years and put them into something for you to watch. Go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now in order to move up as fast as possible. I'm Larry Whitell and I run the Million Dollar Mastermind. Go, go, go.